All right. Um, I am putting together just a short tutorial on how to apply materials and textures using Photoshop. Oftentimes students think um, that it's faster to shop through the library on Rhino and apply the materials and textures in Rhino and then extract it using the rendering. And that's totally okay. And you can work that way if you want to. Um, but I am, I'm gonna introduce a second route, which I think um, gives a little bit more control and also um, doesn't put all the eggs in one basket. And so that's gonna use Photoshop and a black and white rendering um, from Rhino. The other advantage to this is that uh, in terms of time, um, getting black and white shaded renderings out of Rhino or even getting um, a black and white shaded rendering and then one with the sun, maybe around the golden hour or um, with shadow information is really fast to get in Rhino, whereas high quality renderings take a while for the uh, rendering software to run through and depends on the speed of your computer. Whereas a Photoshop file, um, once you have a library, uh, you can um, build out um, a vignette or even several options with a lot more speed. Um, so I'm gonna show that option now. So we're gonna share screen and um, I have been doing some work already where, um, where you guys should be able to see that uh, I'm, I've been shopping around for some trees and some other things. Um, and what this looks like what this looks like is uh, here. There we go. Um, so I've organized some of my files. And some of these I have used previously. So I have some uh, files of staircases that I was using um, just because I wanted to drop in a staircase to a model just as a test before I started modeling it. Um, here I have tufts of grass, I have trees, um, I have some scale figures, I have uh, trees changing color, I have some more grass. And this is key because this grass is taken with its um, in silhouette. And so it's against a, uh, a more plain background, which will allow me to extract this. Even if I don't want a wintertime shot, even if I want to add green, at the very least, it's be easier for me to select later. Um, so now we're just going to share over to Photoshop. And this should share to this screen. All right. And you can see that what I have here is um, Soleil has uh, volunteered uh, her project, and I also have this one from Tiago. They both have Sunset Cabin, and I'm going to be using these to um, apply some textures and color. All right, um, so I have some stuff already parked over here to show you that um, if you've already done the work of cutting some things out, you can move those over. So uh, this, this one right here is that I already have done the work of cutting out these kind of fall color uh, trees right here. So what I can do is I can grab those trees out of that Photoshop file and just move them right over to here and drop them in. And I'll do a little thinking and there are those trees and, uh, and I can even kind of adjust these a little bit and already start to have them in there in the file. Um, as a matter of fact, I could put them behind this um, tree right here. Let's just do a little quick little movement and uh, mirror them. Uh, there we go, this direction. Make that group of trees smaller. And we're just gonna kind of place them in there. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna um, put them behind in just a little bit. So I'm gonna turn those off. And I'm going to open just a few more of these files that I already have open. So I was looking at some, I was looking for some weeds against backgrounds earlier, and I was looking for some wood decking. Um, this meets a lot of the needs that we have. It's a high quality image. I can zoom in. It's not until I get about here, it starts to get pixelated. So that's way smaller than I'll ever need it to be um, on the image. I'm just going to, so I'm going to grab this and copy it. I'm not going to drop it in. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy and paste. 
Now, when I paste it in, I want to add a name just because I know that, you know, I'm going to come away from this file. I'm going to work on it later. And I don't want to come in with layer one, layer two, layer three, layer five, layer 50. So we're just going to say wood texture number one. All right. Now, immediately, one of the issues that we're going to have here is that the wood texture doesn't kind of doesn't line up. Um, so when I when I when I put this on here, um, it's not going to line up. And that, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you just yet. But I'm going to grab a different wood texture while we're at it from my library. So I've already gotten this other one which I've just called large warm wood texture. Now this doesn't have any, this has the grain and it has that nice warm wood texture to it, but it doesn't have any joints. Sometimes we wanna have that, sometimes you don't. Um, and so we've got two examples here. We're gonna paste that in and we're gonna name this wood texture two, no joints. All right, and that's placed in there, all right. And then I'm going to do one more that's uh, concrete. So we're going to go back into here and we'll do concrete with a crack. So we've got, we've got um, three different types of textures. One where there is a clear joint pattern, one where there's kind of a unique feature like this crack, and another one where there is really no directional features whatsoever. All right, we're going to put that in there and we're going to say it's concrete with the crack. All right, now I'm gonna start with the concrete so you guys can kind of see the concept of what we're doing. Um, the walls are not concrete, the floor is. So that you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna change the opacity here down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to uh, edit and transform. Now you can get here by just hitting control T on your computer. Um, and actually what I wanna do is a free transform. So that's control T. Um, other forms of transform would kind of move this around and change its shape. But the free transform, again, here, control T, I can grab this and kind of move it around wherever I want it to be. Uh, I, can, I can adjust this. Um, on newer, newer versions of Adobe, the control T will take you into a form that looks like this. So what you can see I'm doing right now is I'm just fitting that concrete to the perspective that the model is providing. And I'm gonna hit enter. All right, and right now, uh, let me turn the opacity back up on that so you can see it. So you can see that clearly it's, um, it's kind of getting in the way, but it's got a believable kind of texture and perspective to it. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the wood textures now too. So I'm gonna turn this wood texture on, make sure we've got that selected. I'm gonna do a transform, edit, transform, and I'm gonna just distort it here and kind of place it so that it fits the perspective. And I'm gonna duplicate that layer because um, I'm going to show you guys an option where the wood grain is going up and down, or what would be more likely is that the wood grain, the wood grain is going the opposite direction. So we're going to, uh, I just did a, I did a duplicate of that layer right there. I'm going to rotate that 90. We're going to distort it again, and we're just going to get it to match. that size right there. Uh, we don't have to get it perfect. You can always go back in and do some kind of micro adjustments. Hit enter there. And just switching back and forth between those, you think this is gonna give us kind of a more believable wood grain. And then we're gonna turn those off and just get the other wood grain here. And again, so that we can compare and contrast it, uh, I think I'll put that in the same spot. Let's put that there. And again, just edit, transform. I'm gonna use the distort. You guys can use free transform in the uh, newest layer of Adobe. And so 
here is where you're going to have to be smarter than the computer. So if you see, if I put this up here like this, let me turn on the opacity and move it down a little bit so it's a little transparent. If you see, as you're looking through there, those joints are not going to line up with the joints, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to actually adjust these joints. So I'm going to adjust the image so that it's fitting with the perspective better like that. Right, And that's something to keep in mind when you're shopping around for an image, you could look for a perspective um, that maybe doesn't match. Now, if you find an even on um, one, if you find something that looks like, let me just pop this up here. So if you find something like this large warm wood tone, that one looks like this. It's opening on my other screen. It looks like this versus uh, the wood tone that looks more like these, um, it just means that you're gonna have to do a little bit more thinking down the line. If you really love this image, you want those knots in there, then this is the one to choose. Um, but if you're, if you're realizing that your image is making more work than it's worth, then move on to a different image. All right, so we're back in Photoshop, we're gonna accept those transformations, all right? Um, and we're going to keep this here like that, all right? And now what I'm gonna do, I've already made a, a layer out of this. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. We're gonna call this cabin one high contrast. And we're gonna call this then the original. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this cabin and hit Control L, which takes us into levels. And I'm just gonna adjust this. And this is why I wanted a black and white image. We're gonna adjust this to be kind of really loud in the shadows and really loud in the, in the highlights. I'm gonna say, okay. Um, I see that there's a little bit of blue to this. That's fine. We're just gonna go into the saturation and we might actually use this later. That's why I made a duplicate where we could kind of change that saturation to be a little purple. A lot of times shadows are actually kind of have a purplish hue to them or we could make it warmer like that, which is really nice. Um, but for now, we just don't want that saturation at all. We just want the shading. So I'm gonna turn the saturation down to zero and say, okay. All right, now this is very familiar. We're gonna go back to the magic wand tool, the Spider-Man tool, and we're gonna use the color range. And in color range, what we're going to do is first, we're going to select as much of the white pixels as possible, like that. So we've just selected the white pixels, and we are going to copy and paste them out. And we're going to say cabin one, white uh, highlights, we'll call that highlights. And then we'll go back, we're going to turn that off, and we're going to go back in again. And you know what? I want this to be even more contrasty. I want this to be darker. Yep, like that. There we go. Nice and dark in the contrast. All right, we're going to do this again. We're going to select the shadows. We're going to keep that range about the same. So now we've selected the gray tones, and we're going to copy that out. And we're going to call this cabin one shadows. All right, we're going to use these both later. Um, and let me just do a layer so that you can see what it is that we've selected here. So I'm just gonna make a background layer that's orange. And we'll just grab orange because it's the best color, it's the color of construction. And we'll just dump that back there. Oh, hang on first, let's have a, let's unselect that and put the best color, there we go. So there it is, just the shadows. Um, here it is with just the highlights. So now that we've changed these out for what they are, we're gonna use these as layer masks. All right, I'll turn that back on. So if I turn this wood on here, this wood texture, and I bring its opacity up to 100%, and I put it underneath these layers, uh, what you're gonna see is it looks like the background is suddenly where all those shadows are has a wood tone to it. Um, I could even do that as the color orange. And now it looks like the inside of the cabin has a color of orange to it. And I could erase these areas that I don't want. Uh, 
Um, let's try it out with some of our other wood textures. So we'll try it here. Uh, there's a wood texture inside. It's actually not too bad. Let's try it with our wood texture sideways. There it is there. That's also not too bad. Um, and we can swap it out and say, what would it look like if it was just, oh, now I'm realizing I want my background to be white as well. So let's just duplicate that layer, white background. And we'll just paint bucket white there. Um, so you can see that it's kind of showing through. Still not, it, there's adjustments that we need to do. I'm just looking at these textures. So, so what we now need to do is apply a layer mask. And this is gonna make um, a little bit more sense. I'm gonna go back to those trees I was telling you about. So we're gonna turn those trees back on over here. And I'm gonna turn this original uh, cabin back on. So when we turn these trees on, um, they're standing in front of the cabin, which is not what we want. Um, so what we could do is we could cut out this piece of them right here and we could just cut that out away. We could just cut that away from them. I'm just gonna and but it's not gonna, it doesn't, it doesn't want to do that. It's a it's a complex shape, it's a group. I've made it out of a couple different trees. I've done a lot of work there. So instead we'll do a layer mask onto it. So here we're gonna say that we're gonna put a layer mask on, and let's just say layer mask uh, hides everything. And when we do that, you can see that the trees disappear and over here a black box appears on the layer. And if you get a paintbrush and you paint with either black or white on this black box as it's selected, what you're gonna see is that I'm painting with white and it's starting to show up on that black box. And so as I do that, those trees, and let's make this brush a little bit bigger, those trees come back into the foreground. And actually I can paint all of the trees back into the foreground. Uh, and then if I don't like that, all I have to do is swap the colors by hitting that little button, swaps it back to black, and I can paint them out again. All right, and if I mess up a little bit, and what I like about this is it allows you to go back and forth and test. You can, if you wanna get some sharp lines here, which I do because the tree does show up for some of it. I can, I can, you know, scratch that off right there and I can just paint within that box. Again, if you mess up, you just switch it back over. There we go. Like that. Uh, and then I can do, again, some smaller adjustments. I can make them, there we go. Let's just add to that. The box goes to there. trying to go too fast. There we go, double click. And then I'll just paint in that area. There we go, paint that out. And there we go. The, the trees are there. Let's uh, bring their opacity back up to 100. And now it looks like the trees are behind and we immediately get depth. We immediately get dimension from that. Um, the nice thing about a layer mask, if we chose to delete this, and cut them out, we can never go back. But since we made a layer mask, you'll see that this mask right here that is highlighted, it means that I'm using it currently, is locked. That's what that chain means to that group, which is that folder. So that's the kind of programming sentence that we have there. Now, if we unchain them and you deselect the mask and you select the group, we can go to move and I can move the trees around and you'll see where that mask still is located but I can adjust the trees and park them where I want them. So I can put them down and closer. I can put them up. I like them. I like them there. So, and then if I want to do this, I can chain it again. Now, what's really cool is I can grab that mask and I can duplicate it or make another one. And that's what we're about to do with this texture. So you can paint with the mask, but you can also do it through a selection. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn those. I'm going to turn those trees off now that you understand what a layer mask is. That'll protect me from uh, messing around with it. I'm going to turn the shadow back on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the magic wand tool. 
to do a color range and select all of the black pixels. And of course we can do that by selecting these pixels and making it fuzzy, but that means I only select some of the pixels or I can select the white pixels, make it really fuzzy, right click and select inverse. And like I'm fond of telling you guys in class, I always do this wrong the first time. Um, and that's fine because trial and error, this is all about trial and error. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn off that layer and turn on the wood layer that I want to use right here. So now I have this selection and I have, I have this selection from a different layer and I have this texture from this layer. I'm going to move to this layer and make it active. And I'm going to say layer, layer mask, and we can say reveal selection or hide selection. Remember, I always do this backwards. So let's say reveal selection. There we go. Uh, so I've made a very complex layer mask and you can see that it's right there. And just like I always do, I did it backwards. So we're just gonna hit undo, control Z and layer mask, uh, hide selection. There we go. So there's the hidden selection and turn this on behind it. And what you can see here is that these pieces on the mask are showing through as if they're wood. Now it's not done yet. Let's do a little bit of, let's, let's do a little bit of cleanup, right? Uh, first of all, I want to turn those trees back on because they make me happy. And then I actually want to go in here because I want this texture on just those boards. I don't want the texture on the inside pieces here. Uh, I don't want it here. So I'm going to cut this out. And um, and then you can see there's a, it's I got this kind of a little bit not correct. So I'm going to cut this piece out here all the way back. And I'm just holding down the shift, which allows me to add to my selection tools. So I'm going to grab this piece down here that's too low. And this is key. We're not going to select the layer. We're going to select the layer mask. We're going to grab the paintbrush. And we're going to just paint that out. We're going to paint those out. We're going to paint this out. Uh, I could get picky and really get in here. Uh, and I could zoom in and just kind of grab these really quick if I wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to grab this big one for now. But I think you guys understand the point of what it is that I'm doing. I'm also going to show you how it might not matter for me to get all of those details. Um, and then there's an edge, there's a corner right here. I want to get that too. All right, so we're going to grab that piece down to that corner and over and paint that out as well. Now, there we go. We've got one of those selected. Oh, and I want to get this too, don't I? Right here. Again, a little bit messy, not my best work. Okay, there we go. So we've got that edge. Now check this out. Here is uh, ooh, two layers at the same time. That's kind of a bad Miori pattern. Um, if we grab this layer mask and move it down to here, check this out, we can move it and now it affects that layer and we can see how it's arranged with the vertical grain. Definitely like it with the horizontal grain better. Uh, let's try it out with this one. So we can put it down. And you can see the layer mask isn't working up top here, not working down at the bottom, but it's working in the middle. And the other problem that you can see, and this is what this is what happens in Photoshop, but it actually happens even worse in Rhino, is where you bring in a texture and it's not at the right scale. And and this doesn't this makes sense because look at this, the scale of that board is way larger. Um, so there's it just doesn't work with each other. So when we put it together, it looks wrong. And in Rhino, you need to go into the settings deeper and adjust what's called the U and the V. But here we can just scale it with our I using transform. And when you're working quickly and you're doing an output like this, once you've done the work of making the mask, swapping any of these images in and out becomes relatively easy. So I'm going to say that I like this one and we're going to choose to continue with this. And we could actually, we could continue that with all of these. Um, so let's see what else we can do in terms of um, getting some tones. I kind of liked that orange in the background of the uh, shaded tone back here. Let's see if we could get 
that orange into the background. So if I grab these images right here, I'm gonna grab this, all this concrete and we're just gonna make it a color back into that floor back there, grab this piece. And since we're in mostly orthogonal shapes, cutting around these, it's not that bad. Uh, I could go back here, grab this up to here. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but we can always we can always cut out more later. So I'm not really all right. We could do that image right there. You could do a layer and a new layer. Um, interior, we'll call that. Um, we could say uh, that we want to um, go and apply a layer mask, layer mask, and we want to reveal the selection. And uh, on that layer, I'm going to turn this back off. On that layer, we can paint in the color that we want. So I'm just going to paint that in right here. And you can see already that um, I've got some choices. I actually could just, if I didn't like that color up here, I could, where I, where I kind of messed up around with the mask, I could just cut it out. We could move that interior so it's below the, uh, below the color of, uh, below the layer of the wood. We can, put our trees are on. Okay, that's nice. And we could uh, also just cut out these windows. And again, since the windows are orthogonal, it's not that hard to just kind of hit cut to cut them out. And I could either cut or I could have them be, be uh, a part of the, the layer mask and then never have to go back and cut it again. All right, so let's add the wood there. We'll add the cabin. Um, that orange is a little bit much, so I'm actually gonna turn the opacity of that down to just let it be a little bit warmer. I like that better. Um, we don't have the shadows turned on, so let's go look for that shadow layer. Oh, we don't have the concrete turned on. So let's turn on that concrete. That's our high contrast one. Here's our highlights. We could make those shadows even more, a little bit more, I think, just to kind of make it pop a little bit. There we go. And so now I think you guys see what we're doing with the cracked concrete there. We could uh, we could just cut out that cracked concrete. But before I do that, let me show you another way that we could deal with the concrete texture. Turn that off and we're gonna go back to the concrete here. All right. Uh, so one of those ways that we can bring it in and do a layer mask, the other is that we can do, we can actually do what Rhino is doing in its um, file, which is creating uh, a texture file or what is called a bump map. And first to do that, I wanna make this, this is already pretty high contrast, but I wanna make it a little bit more high contrast. So I really get that texture. Um, you see how there's some color artifacts in there? I'm actually going to move it to black and white. So we're going to go in here to adjustments, saturation, take the saturation out of it so it's purely black and white. And then we're going to use the magic wand to do color range again. And we're going to select the dark gray, not just the pure black, but the, the dark gray. Make that fuzzy. And we're going to control and cut that away. And what that should look like when we go back to our uh, example, that is not our example, this example, and paste it in, uh, what you see is we get a little bit of a texture there. Uh, the only thing is, I'm saying we didn't bring in our black. Um, so let's just do that one more time, which is fine. Let's get practice. Uh, we'll go back to the concrete. We'll do this. We'll We'll get a little bit of the darker color range, get a little bit of the darker gray, make it even more fuzzy. Not that, there we go. Cut that out. There we go. That, that's going to work nicely. We're going to hit paste. 
And what you can see is we get this, we get this crack right here. And now we're gonna do, you guessed it, we're gonna do the transform. I'm gonna do distort on my old copy here, but we're gonna make that fit with the perspective of this shape. And we can kind of mess around with it a little bit, but all of a sudden, let's get it in there like that. Let's get that edge so it stops right there and hit enter. All of a sudden it looks like that concrete is cracked right across it. And that's called a texture file. Let's do that with another, let's do that with a, another image and see what we get. Um, I think I have some more concrete texture. And so you could do a texture file and then make it whatever color you want. So let's go down here. I've did some other concrete ones. Here's a fiber, fibrous concrete. Oh, here we go. Board formed concrete. I knew I picked that one for a reason. So we've got this great texture on here of this board formed concrete. Let's again, make it higher contrast. So we want brighter highlights, darker shadows until we start seeing some artifacts and we want to stop. So that's pretty good. We're going to get rid of again, and this is, this is a small difference, but it makes a difference. We're going to take the saturation out. We're going to use that Spider-Man tool color range to hit and get these like the darkest of grays, the, the almost blacks, make it real fuzzy, say, okay, cut it out and then move back to our example file and hit paste. All right. And now I'm going to just do a little bit of edit and transform. All right. And the key here is to transform it in such a way that it matches the perspective that you're expecting. So as I move these kind of up and over is to kind of create it into the perspective that your, your mind expects. Let's do this story here. All right, so, so I'm just kind of following along with the perspective. I'm letting Rhino do all of the complicated perspective making, and then we're just dropping this on here like this, all right? And then we'll bring that down, make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. And now I say, okay. Now, um, what you should do at this point is just make a layer mask, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna show you how you can do it really fast. And we're just gonna cut out what we don't need. So that little piece there, we don't need. This piece here, we don't need. down there, over to here, and back, cut it out, and there it is. Now, what's really interesting, we need to do this concrete texture boards. And uh, I believe this one is the crack, yep. So check that out. You can actually, concrete crack, you can layer these on top of each other. So you can actually make different ones on top of each other. Now, since I uh, already have that board form over here, uh, we could back up, not that one. Let's not save that file. We could back up. Let's open our history. And here's our history. We're gonna grab those same colored pixels, copy, go back here, hit paste. And I could, uh, I could transform, we can turn it, edit, transform, uh, that was distort that we were doing. Move this down, move this all the way down to here. Move this all the way down to here. I don't actually have to follow it precisely. I just need to make it fit the perspective. It's probably going to be a little bit too big. So let's just adjust again. Oh, here we go. We'll adjust it to the end of that piece right there like that and say, okay, apply transformation. And I'm just going to cut off again, just snip the piece that we don't need. I'm going to cut that off. And now it looks like it turns the corner there. And then we're going to do paste. Now the key to this methodology is that it works very well as long as 
you do enough of them. If you just do one and you try to count it so that the one, one of them does all the work for you, it's not really going to work. Now, we want that text to be slightly smaller because it's been foreshortened a little bit. We're going to say, OK, move that into place there. Control T, and we're just a little bit of attention there. Apply that transformation. All right, we're going to cut this piece off again. And your eye likes patterns, but it doesn't like patterns that it knows are just repeating like rubber stamps. So what's happening here, edit, transform, distort, what we're doing is that we're, because it's expecting that this should get smaller the further it gets away from us, which is a little bit of what I'm doing here. And then we're gonna snip it again. paste it again and check this out. So now it looks to our eye, and this is why we're working at 300 DPI, which is why we're looking at an image that's this big. What you can see is that we've got, man, we have this wood grain texture. We got this concrete texture. Um, and we're working in a way where we can adjust and put things all around it. So check this out. Let's do, let's, um, let's add some of this extra texture to the bottom of this piece right here. Right, like that, say okay. When we zoom in, um, you can see that some of the shadows aren't working very well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do levels again. Excuse me, we're gonna up the darkness even more. You're gonna preference even the highlights being darker, so that makes it a little bit, little bit more dark. Um, we're gonna cut the excess away again. So that time the excess is gonna be up here as well. Cut that away. These little pieces make big differences. So you can see that texture along the bottom. Now I'm not gonna show you why this doesn't matter so much over here and this doesn't matter so much in these areas. In these areas where you're getting bleed, see that's bad, we don't want that. Let's cut that out. Cut out the crack there. There we go. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add just a little bit more entourage, not have this, and this is why the white background is really important. So I've got all these different weeds in the snow. Uh, I'm gonna close these files. I'm gonna close the concrete files and we're gonna open, uh, we're gonna open this uh, gnarly tree and we're gonna open these weeds against the ice and these ones all right here all right it doesn't like that file which is fine okay all right so let's get this gnarly tree root here um we could cut it out but i think actually what i'm going to do is we're going to do a color range of this we're going to up the fuzziness to about there seems like we've got most of it yep select inverse there we go. We can move this guy in here. Like that. And all right. Now we know from our prior experience that having these sharp edges really kind of breaks the, the belief for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop into it a little bit and we're going to make a layer mask out of it so we're going to say uh image layer no nope, layer layer mask uh hide selection there we go and then we're going to do it again over here allow it to show us this piece of funkiness right here And we're gonna say, uh, let's see if it'll add to the layer mask. Nope, all right, so we gotta just paint, which is fine. So we'll paint this in here. Now, here's the cool thing about the layer mask. Now, like cutting that out would be a real pain. 
Um, but you can see there's some pieces here too. So if you do black and white, it is the effect of, uh, of erasing or um, erasing or uh, um, revealing. But if you do gray, so this is a layer mask with gray, it's the effect of having it be a little bit transparent. Now I'm gonna move both of these things around and we can plant this like over here. You know, and you can see that gray layer mask there. We can plant that there. Maybe that's a little bit too big. We can make the whole thing smaller and the layer mask will go along with it, hit enter. And then we can make any little adjustments that we wanna make. Go back to black and white and do a little erasing there. Nudge it back in. Um, we could even kind of do a little underpainting. So let's just add a new layer and we could create our own shadow layer. Uh, let's name that layer, which is a uh, crusty tree. And we'll put the shadow underneath that and we'll paint with black. Oh, not quite what I was envisioning there. Drop that shadow until it's underneath everything. All right, sorry. Nope, and I just accidentally put it with the trees. Put that under the crusty tree. Cut that shadow away. And then let's link this these two together so that they move as one and then just kind of put that in there. So that, that tree now feels like it's kind of wrapping around that edge. Now, the more things that we start to add, the more that's gonna look good. Um, so, and here's what I mean by that. So let's find some good weeds like these weeds here and we'll do another color range. It's one of my favorite tools, it's one of my least favorite tools. All right, we're gonna do fuzzy. I'm gonna select them out, go back into the chair and paste them in. Start to build in a little bit of these weeds in here. Control L, maybe adjust them a little bit, make them a little darker right there. And race out this square here. The more that we add these layers, now I'm the way that I'm modeling it right now, you can literally see these layers. And this is kind of my style, which is this kind of collage style where you know that it's a collage, but the layers of the collage kind of build up and tell the story. So I, I keep in some of the horizontals. You don't want lots of them. But the other way to do this would be to keep on layering pieces, sometimes with pieces that have broken up um, edges so you start layering them onto each other or you have a drawing cover over this or you have another piece that covers over top of this if we had like Soleil's uh, image right now and let's just kind of make it a little bit more black and white like this and we did a color range and we grabbed mostly the shadows here and the gray there we go and we got most of that and we said okay and then we actually added the roof on here as well. You know, we could go in here, we could hit paste and we could hide some of that area by literally putting Soleil's drawing on top of it. So we don't need to worry about finishing it because her drawing is gonna be in the way and we don't need to hide it. Or maybe it's a site plan, or maybe it's another file. And you could start building out your story this way. Um, you could arrange it in Photoshop, but we could also do this in InDesign. The nice thing about doing this in InDesign is we could work on one and the other. We could look at both of them in InDesign together. Um, and we could keep making adjustments to them. So that's how to use layer masks to apply texture, background, entourage, and quickly change out um, uh, environment. and if you give yourself time, uh, once you've 
once you've gotten these pieces, you can use them in future projects. So every time, every minute that you invest doing it now is a minute that you save yourself on a future project. So I hope that this tutorial has been helpful. We'll end it there.